This is our first uh, combination circuits example. So let's draw the circuit. It looks like this. R1 is 8 ohms, R2 is 5 ohms, and R3 is 10 ohms. And the total battery voltage is 10 volts. And then go ahead and draw a chart because we're going to want to find all of these values eventually. So pressure difference across resistor 1 is delta V1. I1 is the flow rate through resistor 1, and then this is the value of resistor 1. So let's make a row for each component. And then also a row for the total value. So the total pressure difference of the circuit is just the battery voltage. Total flow rate through the circuit <laughs> is the flow rate that's happening here up until that point. After that it splits up. And then at this point the flow in each branch combines together and we have total flow rate occurring in this part of the circuit as well and then uh, total resistance, that's the equivalent resistance of all this. So if you took this combination and replaced it by a single resistor, what value would that resistor have to be such that you would have the same flow rate happening out here? So what, what is this combination equivalent to? So let's fill in the values that we know. We know the total voltage is 10 volts, R1 is 8 ohms, R2 is 5 ohms, R3 is 10 ohms, and in order to go any farther in finding any of these values, we're going to have to find the total equivalent resistance. And if you know the individual resistors, all of them, you can always calculate this. So let's start with that, finding the equivalent resistance. When you're finding equivalent resistance, you need to look for a, a subpart of the circuit that is purely series or purely parallel. So let's take a look at this. Um, R1 and R2, are those a purely series combination? And the answer is no, because there is this branch going off right here in between those two resistors. A purely series combination looks like this without any branches going off in between. So those are not in series. R1 and R3 are not in series because of this branch. What about maybe these two are in parallel? Well, they are, because from this point, we have two branches, it splits up, and then recombines together at this point. So purely parallel is going to look like that, where you have some kind of an incoming point, then you have some kind of a branch, and then it goes back together. So we have a purely parallel combination. I'm going to put a dotted line around it. And we're going to find the equivalent resistance of just those two resistors because those are in parallel and we know how to do that for parallel resistors. So using our equation for resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance of resistors 2 and 3 is 1 over resistor 2 plus 1 over resistor 3. And putting in the values that we know, 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms, and solving that, we find that R23 is equal to 3.33 ohms. So now I'm going to redraw my circuit, my simplified circuit, replacing resistors 2 and 3 with this equivalent resistance. So if I was going to replace them with a single resistor, that resistor would have a value of 3.33 ohms. And redrawing the circuit is a really good idea because it enables you to recognize the new relationship between the resistors. So now what am I going to do? I see that I have two resistors in series. So now I'm going to take these two and find the combination of those in series. Well, the series relationship is a sum. So resistance of 1, 2, and 3 all together which you could also call RT, is R1 plus R23, which is 8 ohms plus 3.33 ohms, which is 11.33 ohms. 
And now I can draw my final circuit simplification, which is to replace everything in this dotted bubble with this final total resistance of 11.33 ohms. And now that I have this value, I can also put it up here in the chart. Okay, so that's the first step of finding the equivalent or total resistance of the circuit. Now the next step is to work on finding all of these other values. So look at, see what we know and what we could find next. So I think because we have the total pressure difference and we have the total resistance that we could find the total current in the circuit. So I'm going to do that right over here. So I'm going to find IT and it's good if you can show your works otherwise it's hard to backtrack and figure out what went wrong if there's a problem so maybe write down what you're finding and then show your work underneath so the pressure difference equals the current times the resistance so 10 volts equals the current times the resistance and solving for the current or the flow rate we get 0.88 amps. So I'm going to fill that in in my chart. And also think about where is that happening in the circuit. Well, it depends which one of these I look at, but it's always going to be the flow rate that's occurring right after the battery. There are no branches, so this same flow rate happens everywhere in this equivalent circuit. And what about this one? No branches in this circuit either. So we have the same flow rate of 0.88 amps everywhere in this circuit. Which actually tells me something, because that means that 0.88 amps is the flow rate through resistor 1 because there are no branches that happen before resistor 1. So the total flow rate goes through that resistor. So I can fill this in in my chart. 0.88 amps is the flow rate through resistor 1. Okay, what can we find next? I see that for resistor 1, I know the flow rate and I know the resistance. So that means I can find the pressure difference. So I'm going to find the pressure difference for resistor 1. So using my relationship here, I have pressure difference for resistor 1 equals flow rate for resistor 1 times resistance of resistor 1 putting in the values I know. I know the flow rate and I know the resistance. And calculating that, I get 7.0 volts. Okay, so I can fill that in, in the chart. And then I also want to always recognize where are these things on my, on my diagram, on my circuit diagram. This is the pressure difference across resistor 1. So if we had a voltmeter here, it would read 7 volts. So the pressure difference across the battery is 10 volts, and that's actually an increase in pressure if you go this way across the battery, because you're going from blue to red with our color coding. And then here we're going from red to maybe um, maybe green, so maybe red to green is a pressure difference of 7 volts. Now think about what's going to happen after that. In fact, I'm going to actually quickly color code this circuit. If we color code this circuit, it is going to look like this. Okay, there's going to be a pressure difference across each resistor. And just for the sake of argument, I don't care if you do orange, yellow, or green here, just something intermediate. So you recognize that all of these wires are at the same pressure and that it's something less than the red pressure and something more than the blue pressure. 
So when we go from blue to red, that's a change of 10 volts. When we go from red to green, that's a decrease in pressure of 7 volts. And so then, what's going to happen when we go from green to blue? Well, it has to be the rest of the pressure difference. Um, if red to blue is 10 volts, and green to red was 7 volts, then green to blue has to be 3 volts. It has to be the rest of that total pressure difference. So green to blue has to be 3 volts. So the, that tells us that this pressure difference across R2 must be 3 volts. And once again, this is also green to blue, so that's also 3 volts. Now once you know those pressure differences, now you can find the flow rate through each of these resistors. So now I'm going to find the flow rate through resistor 2. So delta V2 equals I2 R2, um, which is 3 volts, equals I2 times 5 ohms. And solving that, I find out that I2 is 0.6 amps. Okay, so let's think about where this is on the picture. The total flow rate here, the current happening from the battery, is 0.88 amps. And that's the flow that goes through this resistor. Now at this point, which I'm going to call point A, we have a branch in the circuit. Some of the flow is going to go this way as um, I3, the current through resistor 3, and some of it's going to go this way as the flow through resistor 2. Now together, those have to be equal to the total flow rate. So at this point, the 0.6 amps that I have found is the flow rate going through this resistor right here. I'm running out of room to write it, but 0.6 amps is going through this resistor. If I had a total of 0.88 amps and 0.6 is going this way, the rest of it must be going the other way, which means it must be 0.28 amps going the other way. So we did, we figured out this by just reasoning that the total current had to split into two parts and that we already knew one of the other parts. You also could find this value using um, this equation again. So I'll just show you the other way to find that same value. You could say, well the pressure difference across 3 is the flow rate in 3 times the resistance of 3. So that's 3 volts equals I3 times 10 ohms. And actually, interestingly here, we are getting 0.3 amps. And the reason for that is, <laughs> the reason is not 0.28, is because we have done some rounding in other places. So we're not getting things coming out exactly uh, the way they should, but that's just uh, due to rounding. The process is correct. So really um, think these through. Think about what's the next thing I know. Um, you'll need to think about, in addition to using this relationship, you'll also need to be able to think about the pressure differences, that the total pressure difference, like we had here, the total pressure difference, and then how the individual pressure differences relate um, as you go around a part of the circuit. And then you also need to think about the currents and how they split up. So the total current equals the sum of these individual currents.